Anthony, in trying to discern what the world really is, scientists and particularly philosophers of science have two different kinds of view. One is the empiricists who say the only thing we can really know are observations, regularities. And others who say we can really go into the, the depth of things, understand things as they really are. How do we judge these two radically different ways of looking at reality? Well, we have to put in place two reminders. Uh, one, one reminder is that um, we are the, sh the, the size and shape we are, and we have the faculties we do, and that the, the universe is uh, massively larger than we are, uh, and that the substructure of uh, the, the elementary nature, fundamental nature of matter, is so much smaller than we are. Um, we, it's no surprise that we find ourselves halfway in between the two uh, ranges just at the moment, because that's how far we can see in both directions. Um, and that means that a lot of our judgments about uh, reality, our non-scientific, ordinary, everyday, perceptual judgments, are relative to those facts about us. So everything we see around us in this room, for example, has the shape and size it does because they're relative to us and to our interests. And we carve the world up in ways that are, are convenient for us. What, it's, what things are really like in themselves, deep down in their, in their most fundamental uh, layer of structure is something which is the, busy, the, the business of physics to discover. Uh, and we are trying to do that by means of this great corporate enterprise, which is self-correcting, self-critical, um, in which large numbers of people scrutinize one another's efforts to try to formulate ideas about the, the very fundamental nature of reality. How things are at the quantum level or at levels below the quantum level is not going to be um, but anything like uh, how they are at this, the macroscopic level, the level of our shape and size. That's the first thought. And the second thought is that the way our minds function, the way our cognitive faculties work, uh, is that they provide a very great deal of material to the incoming data. They shape it, they color it, they, they put sounds on it, they, they organize it for us, they uh, uh, turn it into patterned and, and uh, uh, sequential structures so that we can relate to it successfully. Uh, the fact that we are um, able to escape the assaults of the saber-toothed tiger shows that some of what we are, are doing in our brains really does match how things are at our level of, of reality. And so there is something that we can dis discern which is objective. But there is a great deal of subjectivity in how it seems to us. And the trick is, both in philosophy and science, to be able to prescind from the subjective in order to see what is objectively the case. But is that the case? Are we able to make that leap to where we see things in themselves? I mean, everything looks like it's there, but it's all coming to me through various nerve fibers, my optic nerve, my auditory nerve, and the, and, and the electrical impulses across these are digitizing the world. And it doesn't seem that way to me. It seems like a very nice real world, but it's really kind of like a motion picture that's being played through these, these sense organs. And, and, and so it would seem like the empiricists have, have an argument to be made. Well, th there are ways of testing to distinguish between two different um, hypotheses. One is that our cognitive faculties are very richly coloring and altering incoming data from something which is objective. Uh, and, and the other is that actually we are making that reality. It's ontologically constituted by our experience. That's idealism, the, the metaphysical thesis. That's, that's that, pushing it far, though. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the extreme oh, but, but, but I mean, it's a philosophical position which has had a great deal of, of yeah, uh, some, respectability some, in the past. Right, but, and some resurgence in some quarters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you're right about that. But, yeah. Okay, I mean, that's a very skeptical view of what we have. But there is a reason why people believe that, because of the nature of what we, uh, of, of how we're learning things. So can we even take a little bit of that and, and, and really question the ultimate reality of that which we think we know? Yes, I, I think we do this all the time, because, um, uh, you know, as uh, Dewey pointed out to us, we are in the middle of our experience. Mm -hmm. We are participators. Our perspective is not that we're sitting inside a, a theater in the middle of our heads, passively um, looking at something which is external to us. We're actually engaged with it. We're in contact. We're touching and lifting mm. and tasting mm -hmm. and eating these mm -hmm. things. And uh, over time, so we come to be able to distinguish between the things that are um, accidentally uh, contributed by ourselves and the things that, that, that really matter, that kind of stick in our experience and which we have to factor in 
every time we deal with it. This is how we manage to separate the objective from the subjective in our practice, and which we do very successfully as demonstrated by the fact that generally speaking we survive. Is it the case, though, that the brain that, that evolved because of the survival, the escaping of the saber-toothed tiger or the ability to, to plant and make food, uh, is that uh, in some fundamental way the brain that is able to, to, to understand the fundamental nature of reality? The fact we've gone so far is amazing. But why should it be the case that we could understand reality as it really is because it, our brains evolve for totally different purposes? Oh, well, I agree with you there. I mean, I don't think our brains are constructed to, um, to know the actual nature of reality on the basis of the kind of sensory evidence and cognitive and conceptual structures that we, that we have. I mean, we have a, 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 a large number of innate capacities to see things as colored and, and to hear sounds and to distinguish between different kinds of tastes. And these are all evolutionarily significant for us. But they are about structures in the world which are, again, relative to us, uh, the shape, size, and interest for us. And that's not necessarily how things are down at the deep levels. It, it's for surely not. I mean, because the, the wavelength of different colors are just electromagnetic vibrations in very, very tight range. That's the way it really is. And we perceive it as these colors. And it's, it's a very nice show. Uh, well, so, but it's so not what, the reality. Exactly. So, so what's happening is that we're using an instrument, rather like a periscope uh, or a telescope, which is an instrument that helps us to see further and, and see differently. And the instrument in question is science. So the, the techniques and the methods of science enable us to get beyond the screen that we put up for our convenience that interprets things for us in, in a way that satisfies our needs. That, it's not, that's not internally uh, uh, self-refuting in terms of a circular. We're using science by the same mechanism that we're perceiving the world. We can do tests on it and confirm that what we see is repeatable and occurs at the same time. There's a regularity to it. But does it penetrate the barrier to where you can get to the, to, the, to the objective reality of what that is in itself as opposed to what we make of it? Well, here one has to distinguish between the Cartesian individual perspective. None of us individually is able to escape the, the subjective carapace that's built up around us. But as a community mm. of, of thinkers, hypothesizers, testers, uh, and the rest, we can, as it were, cross-reference our experiences, prescind from the subjective elements of them, and focus down on things that are, uh, are more objective. And, and I think that's precisely what science is about. It's about getting a, as far away from the subjective and as close to the objective as we can.